I, Phil Aston here from Now Spending Magazine, with a Patreon and YouTube member only video, and it's Pink Floyd. And I thought I'd just talk about um, a bit of a journey towards this album when I was a kid. Um, I got into Pink Floyd like many people through Dark Side of the Moon. But prior to that, I was aware of Floyd because of a program called the Old Grey Whistle Test. And the Old Grey Whistle Test used to have, obviously have bands in the studio coming along that weren't singles artists and there'd be live stuff as well. But they also had a segment where they would play a track and have some kind of animated cartoon or something to because the band weren't available to come into the studio or they hadn't got anything to live to show them but they wanted to play a track from the album and one of the tracks that I think is quite famous for those of you who were around at the time and I think it's probably on YouTube is the graphic kind of animation to the song One of These Days this is my Italian single which I bought from Smith's and the B-side is Fearless here it is I like the track Fearless but this is what I bought first. Um, I bought it from Smith's. And um, one of these days, it says 1972 on it, which isn't quite right, is it? It's probably 1972, however. I mean, 71, rather. But it's probably when the single came out. And I loved it. And it was such a, you know, one of these days, I'm going to cut you into little pieces. Remember the growly voice uh, in the track? And then it moves into David Gilmore's slide guitar, that really distorted metal-ish guitar solo over the top. It still is, to me, what made Pink Floyd so different. Dark Side of the Moon almost was a pop album, considered where this was, and where they'd come from, source full of secrets and, and stuff, you know, the kind of really experimental music. And of course, having one of these days, what album was it from? What album? What's the rest of the album like? What is this like? Metal. And metal, of course, for years, I had no real idea what that was. Is it a nose? Is it something underwater? And of course, it was an ear, wasn't it? Which I'm even now holding the wrong way up. Um, and of course, the band as well. This was the era when you didn't smile, everybody. Smiling was not good. Um, you kind of looked indifferent when you were a rock band in those days. And so when I bought it, a friend's older brother had already got it. And, um, and I said, what's it like? Can I hear it? And of course, because we weren't old enough to appreciate stuff then, he played one of these days and then he spun it over and he put on the one track that was on side two. Echoes. What a journey that was what a journey that is staring at this now on the harvest record label pink floyd stereo shvl 795 side 2 1971 echoes written by waters wright mason and gilmore pink floyd music publishing produced by pink floyd the journey that was in here Playing that in my bedroom with all the lights off. Just listening to that echo of the submarine sound and the music coming in and that bit in the middle that sounds like it's really spooky and scary and, and oh wow. It's a time when music still can take you on a journey but when, you're, when your brain is kind of like part empty and you're just like a sponge, you know, all the expectations and the sense of wonder what will I be doing in five years time or where's life going to take me and you put Pink Floyd on all the things about homework and exams and what kind of career you're going to have or where am I going to live you just put echoes on and it was like a safety net around you that took you on a journey that was personal to you you could be in the playground the next day and say have you heard echoes and put in someone's what's it like you say, you've got to hear it. You've got to listen to it. It's a personal journey. You know, you go home and listen to Echoes on your own with your headphones on, usually. And, um, you know, with the curly lead headphones. 
and it was just amazing. You know, Pink Floyd, at this period in their history, they were like, they were still moving in and out of the psychedelia of the 60s in a way. The other tracks was tracks that I kind of just bounced across because I was too young to appreciate this weirdness that they had bookended these two incredible tracks with these kind of like throwaway acoustic numbers, you know, Pillow of Winds, you know, Fearless and, you know, what was it, Seamus and Saint-Tropez. It makes sense now. It's just part of the, the, the box of chocolates that is, was Pink Floyd in those days. But it's still a, a magical album and echoes. Is it one of the best closing tracks on an album of all time? Well, it takes up the whole of side two, so technically it's 50% of the whole album. But it's unlike anything else, isn't it? And it really is. So thank you, everyone, for your support. And thank you for helping me to do these videos. You really are making a huge difference to me. Um, and it's incredibly motivational as well. So thank you very much. Reach out to me by comments or email at um, phil.aston at outspinning.co.uk. Um, it's great to hear from you. And um, if there's anything you want me to cover, just drop me a line. But take care, all of you. And I shall talk to you all very, very soon.